In 1979, Tony Pro was convicted after extorting millions of dollars from C-Train. Today, he's serving 20 years for that crime, plus life for murder. Putting a leading Teamster official like Provenzano in jail is a rare victory. Government investigators have found labor racketeering cases hard to prove, even though the Mafia and the Teamsters have been sweethearts for years, as Jimmy Fratiano knows after 50 years in organized crime. See what they do. They control the vice presidents. They control the, the delegates. You know, they put who they want in there. Like, let's take Cleveland. Let's take Detroit, uh, Chicago, New York. They control it. So, you know, they all got their key man there. At the union's 1981 convention, one key man was replaced by another. Frank Fitzsimmons had died. He was succeeded as Teamster president by the union's boss in Kansas City. I am proud to place in nomination the name of the man destined to become the progressive labor leader of the 80s, a man for our times, the next general president of the International Brother of Teamsters, Mr. Roy Lee Williams. Far from being a progressive labor leader, Roy Williams was wholly owned by the Mafia. This was common knowledge, frequently stated in newspapers and in the Senate, and yet Williams was still elected by a massive majority. Not all members of the union welcomed his election. Rebels outside the hall were protesting at the whole voting system and the intimidation that went with it. The people are afraid. I mean, you're getting $10, $11 an hour. If you open your mouth, they're right on your back. Uh, you're out of a job. Your business agent comes out and tells you, buddy, you got a job. What are you bitching about? And if he goes too far, he'll tell him, you know, we don't have a job tomorrow now. You got anything else to say? I uh, used to be in the meetings where somebody got up and said something they didn't like. Three or four guerrillas picked him up and put him outside. That's simple. There was no cohesion. It was usually an individual would speak up or two and they'd out the door. At convention time, members demanding a cleanup in the union have problems even getting into the hall. Without official blessing, they don't get past the door. If any protesters do get inside, they have trouble getting heard. Joe Ehrman got inside the 1981 convention with his group of reformers. They soon faced trouble from the Teamster heavies. Followed us all the time, set us in a certain area. Uh, the fear was there without a doubt. I mean, they had some big gorillas there. You know, and you're not going to oppose. There was something like probably 140 or 50 people in our party along with the delegates. Uh, you know, volunteers, support people and all that and guests. But even then, we were just a small drop in the bucket when they got 40 people on a doorway, this train, and this is what they've been doing. Uh, hell, you walked in there like you was going, you had to be a damn good man and to walk in in the first place if you was a reformer. We're voting now on the amendment. Signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed. Motion is carried. Now. If you don't go along with the program the way they want it, well, maybe they use a little violence. You know, people are scared. They don't want to get hurt. And uh, I have never seen where they had problems, you know, at any convention that they ever had. Because that's how well controlled it is. There's one guy out of Detroit that always runs against the president, but they think he's a nut. He never wins. He never comes close. What about the threat of violence all the time? Well, sometimes you might have to use violence a to get what you want. Sorry, against the the the, uh, the rank and file, against somebody that's against you all the time. You tell them to lay off, lay off, lay off. You don't do it. Well, maybe you got to go to violence. Have somebody break his legs or something. You know, not necessarily kill him, but to hurt him. And it, because he's fighting against organized crime. That's right. Organized crime's power in the union was spelled out yet again in 1982, when Roy Williams was found guilty of conspiring to defraud the Teamsters' pension fund. 
Convicted with him were some of the most powerful mafia hoodlums in Chicago. Roy Williams was the third Teamster president to be jailed in 25 years, and the third who was a creature of the mafia. The new president was Jackie Presser, the union's boss in Cleveland, where the mafia has run Teamster locals for generations. Presser's father was a Teamster boss, convicted of violence, extortion and labor racketeering. Presser himself has often been accused of mob connections. Is there organized crime influence in the Teamsters Union? Not to my knowledge. I still believe that that organized crime on us, and again, it's always unnamed sources say. Well, what about the murder of John Nardi? What about the indictment of Skip Felice? What about the indictment of uh, Tony Libertor, all in Ohio? Are those all organized crime or are those individual acts well, of organized individuals? organized crime figures. No, they're, they're figures by the media as organized crime. The acts of individuals, Brian, really should not be placed on the shoulders of the officers of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. It's unfortunate that people have fault, but you really don't paint the entire International Brotherhood of Teamsters with the same paintbrush. These are men who were murdered in the parking lot of your building in Ohio? These are men who have been gone to prison for murder? Brian, was I arrested for that? Was Brian? I indicted for that? Was I ever mentioned for that? Well, Mr. President, do you feel there's any organized crime influence in the Union? Not to my knowledge. Did you? Absolutely not. Presser now heads what is still America's biggest union. After years I... of scandal, the Teamsters desperately need an honest Most leader. Sincerely promise. Most sincerely promise. Upon my brotherly honor. Upon my brotherly honor. For 30 years, there has been little honor in the Brotherhood of Teamsters. To the best of my ability. American justice has tried to throw the racketeers out of the Union. But every time a Teamster president is convicted and sent to jail, the Mafia's power seems only to grow. You are now the general president. Does the Teamsters' new president serve his members or the mob?